Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Ben. Welcome back to the channel. Now, if there's one thing to know about me, it's that I love cooking on the campfire. From fresh baked biscuits and gravy for breakfast to a killer cherry cobbler for dessert, I'm of the opinion that nearly anything can be cooked over the fire. And if you've seen me do much campfire cooking, you'll know that my trusty Lodge cast iron combo cooker is the star of nearly every dish. From baking pizzas to frying donuts to slow cooking some pulled pork, this cast iron combo cooker can literally do it all. Now I opted for the combo cooker over a Dutch oven a while ago, uh, simply because I like the versatility of a lid that doubles as a frying pan, while still letting me hold hot coals up here for that critical heat from above when I'm trying to bake. Now here's a quick refresher on why cast iron is so great. It heats up evenly and it holds the heat really well. It's virtually non-stick as long as it's got a good season to it. It is easy to clean, which is especially great when we're cooking up in the back country. And if cared for properly, it'll pretty much last forever. But for a while now, through whispers and rumors in dark corners of the internet, I've been hearing about a pot that simply puts cast iron to shame. And as luck would have it, UPS should be dropping one off any minute now. Right on cue. Let's see what we've got. All right, straight from Australia, this is Dr. Livingstone's Baduri Camp Oven. If you watch Ronnie Dahl, if you watch Harry over at Fire to Fork, or if you've got an Australian you know, you no doubt have heard about camp ovens. I guess uh, Australia doesn't want the Dutch to have the monopoly on, on camp ovens, so they don't call it a Dutch oven, but it is fundamentally the same thing, except it's less than half the weight of a cast iron Dutch oven, and supposedly has a lot of the similar benefits, and maybe even has some benefits that cast iron doesn't have. I'm super stoked that this showed up. Let's, uh, let's get right into it. So with all that out of the way, it is time for us to get this camp oven seasoned and ready to start using. The first thing we're going to want to do is, is give it a quick hot soapy wash down, get all that manufacturing residue, shipping, storage, oil. Uh, they really coat these things because they don't want them to get to your door rusty, I would imagine. So we're going to do the same exact thing here that we would if we were seasoning up our cast iron. Uh, we're going to pick an oil, we're going to put a nice thin coat on, we're going to stick it in the oven, bring it up to temperature and let it sit there for a while get that oil polymerizing, forming that nice glassy layer that's gonna give us a durable non-stick coating and uh, keep this thing rust-free for a little while. Let's get to it.
So at this point, we've got our brand new camp oven seasoned and we're ready to cook. But before we get the fire going, I wanted to talk about just what exactly this Baduri camp oven is and how it compares to the cast iron that I'm currently using. Now, the key difference between the two ovens is really the material and the manufacturing process. Cast iron, well, it tells you all you need to know about it. It's molten iron coming out of a furnace that gets poured into molds, a process called casting. A baduri, on the other hand, is also known as a spun steel camp oven. And as it turns out, spun steel uh, gives us some clues into what exactly it is as well. Metal spinning, or spin forming, is a production process that starts with sheet metal and a puck, or a form of the final shape. You chuck your form up into your lathe, you clamp your sheet metal to the form with the tailstock of the lathe, and you get those bad boys spinning. And as they're spinning, you use a tool called a spoon or a roller to shape the sheet metal to the form. You're not adding or removing material here, you're simply pushing the sheet metal uh, and making it conform to the shape of your puck. This process is extremely common for things like cookware and musical instruments and a ton of other stuff, I'm sure. But for some reason, spun steel camp ovens just haven't caught on much in America. So one key difference between the two camp ovens then is that the spun steel manufacturing process results in a, a pot with a uniform wall thickness that is significantly thinner than the cast iron counterpart. While this is great for saving weight, uh, and certainly it is less than half the weight of the same size cast iron combo cooker, uh, it also means this pot heats up and cools down much more quickly. And uh, that is definitely going to be the biggest learning curve of using this camp oven is making sure food doesn't burn, really paying attention and managing the heat here, which you still have to do with the cast iron, but to a much lesser extent because it does have that nice thick base and those thick walls, heats up more slowly and evenly and retains that heat a lot longer after you've pulled it off the fire. The other key difference here is in how the two pots handle the abuse that we can throw at them as overlanders. If you're anything like me, your camp oven likely just gets tossed in the back of your rig and bounces around back there while you're out on a trail. And then once you make it to camp, you toss it right into the fire and cook up a delicious meal. This bouncing and rattling though can actually cause cast iron to crack clean through. Same with dropping it. And unfortunately, whatever duct tape and ratchet strap solution you might be able to MacGyver up in the back country is still not going to be enough to, to get this cast iron back into one piece. A spun steel pot, however, can take this abuse much better. The worst case scenario here might be a couple of dents, which, much like our steel bash plates and bumpers, can pretty much just be hammered out to your heart's content. It's this property of spun steel that actually led to the invention and popularization of the Baduri camp oven in Australia. You see, back in the day, Aussie cowboys also carried cast iron Dutch ovens, but they had a problem. The cast iron kept getting dropped from their horses and cracking when it hit the ground. Clumsy horses, am I right? And if you're a cowboy without a Dutch oven, are you really even a cowboy at all? The answer is no. And at this point in time, if you're asking yourself, wait, Australia has cowboys? The answer here is that you obviously need to go watch Quigley Down Under, a masterpiece film that shows Tom Selleck, an American cowboy, bringing the Wild West to Australia to defeat Professor Snape from Harry Potter. Uh, really, just go watch the movie. It's, it's been a while, but... And at this point, if your question is, well, why did cracked cast iron cause such a problem for Australian cowboys and not American cowboys, which would have led to the popularization of spun steel here in America, I think the answer is either A, our horses are simply less clumsy, or B, it's because we invented the chuck wagon to carry all of our cast iron. Who knows? So to sum it up, spun steel is lighter and can take more of a beating than its cast iron counterpart, at the expense though of needing to put a bit more effort into managing the heat and preventing your dinner from getting burned. So with all this said, it is time now to put this camp oven to the test. Let's go get a fire going and get to cooking.
All right, so we've got the campfire going. As always, we've got to wait for that hot bed of coals to build up. It's a perfect time to uh, grab a beer, relax a little bit, but we're also going to get uh, everything prepped for, for what we're about to make. So I thought long and hard about what to make first in the camp oven and decided that it's only fitting to whip up a good old fashioned Aussie damper. Here in the States, we might typically call this a soda bread or back in the Boy Scouts, we call them ash cakes. No matter what you call it though, the gist of it is the same. It's some self-rising or all-purpose flour. Uh, if you don't have self-rising, just add in some baking powder, uh, some salt, some fat, and some liquid. Uh, it's totally up to you what you want to do here. This could be butter and milk, like what we're doing today. Uh, it could be bacon grease and beer. It could be anything in between. It could also just be some water. Dampers can be sweet, savory. Literally, this, this is just a great camp bread that you can do just about anything you want with. This truly is the quintessential food of the weary, rambling cowboys that thought up camp ovens in the first place. So we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and build our, our damper dough. Um, like I said, if you're actually making this in the bush, the best thing to do is grab some self-rising flour, uh, which is really just all-purpose flour that they've already added some salt and baking powder to. Um, so if all you've got is all-purpose flour, then just uh, add some baking powder to it. So we're going to go ahead and do two cups of flour. Ish. Nothing's, uh, nothing's an exact science when it comes to making a damper. So that's, that's really the key here. Except drinking your beer. That's an exact science. And uh, you want to do about a teaspoon and a half of baking powder to a cup of uh, all-purpose flour to make it rise. So we'll just go ahead and do three teaspoons of baking powder in here uh, for our two cups of flour. There's one, there's two, and there's three. You could do a little more, do a little less. I think if you go too heavy on the baking powder though, you sort of start to, to taste it a little bit, so we don't want that. Uh, now we'll throw in couple teaspoons of salt give it a couple cranks again it's not an exact science uh, yeah this is looking good go ahead and sift that together a little bit just get everything nice and incorporated uh, get flour all over your hand that's always good uh, now we'll go in with with just a little bit of butter and this has been sitting out a while it's room temperature so that it'll incorporate just a little bit better Couple, couple nice spoonfuls there. And so finally, that brings us to our liquid. Uh, we're gonna do milk. I'm gonna go ahead and do about a, a full cup here. And really just, just get in there and start mixing it. This will be a very sticky dough um, and you don't wanna over mix it at all. It, it should be sticky. A good damper dough is, uh, is nice and sticky, so. Just enough liquid to get it all to come together, just enough mixing to get it all to come together. I'm gonna add a little more milk here. Beautiful, it is starting to come together. Something like that should just about do ya. So we're doing our damper in the camp oven, obviously, and, and we've got a couple of ways to go about it. The critical thing here is that we manage the heat from the bottom of the oven because uh, no one likes a burned bottom. You can do this by uh, putting your dough in actually like a, a baking tin and uh, placing that on a trivet inside the camp oven. Make a little aluminum foil trivet just to give it some space from the bottom, give it a little bit of an air gap, or you can uh, throw your damper right into your greased up camp oven and uh, just really try to limit the amount of heat that's going straight into it. Since we're risk takers here and since I don't have a trivet handy, that's the method we're gonna do. Um, so when we're ready, we'll pull uh, the hot coals out, out of the snow peak fire pit, throw them right on top here, 
cross our fingers, say some prayers, and hope that the bottom of our damper doesn't get burned. We will be using the cooking grate, uh, so that'll give us a bit of a standoff from the heat on the bottom, and we'll see what we can do. A damper this size in the camp oven should probably take about 25, 30 minutes, somewhere in there. Uh, you'll know it's done when you pick it up and, and give it a knock on the bottom of the crust and it sounds hollow. That's what we'll be looking for. All right, so we've got a little bit of oil in here. This guy's greased up. Our damper dough is all ready to go. Check that out. That is a nice looking uh, little dough ball. If you're feeding a group, double, even triple this, you could do four cups of flour, six cups of flour. Everything scales evenly here. So that's gonna get thrown in there just like that. You know what you can even do? grab your knife and I just like to uh, give it a little crisscross score here. Uh, that'll help give you some uh, lines to break it on. Lid goes on. All right, so we're gonna let that go about five, 10 minutes over the heat like that. Um, and then I'm actually just gonna pull the whole camp oven off the snow peak, set it next to it, and throw the rest of the heat just straight from the top. Might do a little bit uh, around the sides. We just definitely don't want that bottom to burn. So in the meantime though, we're gonna whip up a quick honey butter, which is one of my favorite ways to eat a damper. Get it warm straight off the fire, throw some honey butter on it, maybe some jam, and ooh, you are set for a breakfast. Again, we've got our Stanley double walled bowl here, which is my favorite mixing bowl when I'm camping, and some of that room temperature butter, so it's gonna be really easy to mix. All right, so like I said, we'll throw a little bit of our softened butter into our mixing bowl. Don't worry about making too much honey butter. You're gonna find a way to eat it. I promise you that. That's probably good for us though. It's honey butter. So our next ingredient obviously has gotta be honey. Half a tablespoon, a tablespoon, however much you feel like, just go for it. You know, live your best life. Gonna hit it with some some brown sugar as well. All right, after the brown sugar, we're just gonna hit it with a bit of cinnamon. Ooh. Get that nice and mixed up real well. Oh yeah. All right, now we're all set. We just gotta wait for the damper to bake. And uh, in the meantime, don't forget about your beer. Oh, now that's looking great. All right, the moment of truth. Okay, so uh, I noticed it getting a little dark on the top around here. That's why I turned my coals into a ring. Hear how hollow it sounds? It's a sign of a perfectly cooked damper. All right, for first time cooking in the spun steel camp oven, I reckon that's right as rain. You can't go wrong with a damper that looks like that. Uh, now, all we need to do is see if we can get this guy Oh, check that out. That is how it's supposed to be. And of course, we've got that honey butter we whipped up here. Oh, oh this is gonna be too good. Wow. 
All right, folks, it is time for me to end this video because this damper is not gonna wait around for me to eat it. In conclusion though here, first time cooking in the spun steel camp oven, I did have a little bit of a heat issue. Both the top got a little darker than I probably would have wanted it to as well as the bottom. I think I was probably just over by a minute. If I would have just not had to worry about the camera or anything else, I probably could have pulled it just in time. So that's on me, I'm not gonna blame the oven for that. Now, I reckon I could have done the same thing in my cast iron combo cooker, but it's clear to me that the spun steel camp oven has its advantages. It is less than half the weight of my cast iron combo cooker. It can sure take a heck of a beating. Um, although, you know, I've never had an issue with cast iron cracking personally. So I think overall, it's a good piece of kit to have. I'm definitely gonna work it into my usual rotation. We'll see, summer's upon us. I've got a lot of trips coming up. It'll be interesting to see which one I grab as we're heading out on trips. I do think that there's a ton I can do in the spun steel camp oven. So like I said, I think, I think that's gonna do it. Uh, if you've got any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. And if you like this video, it's always a huge help to give it that thumbs up. And if you're new here, think about subscribing and sticking around for a while. We've got a ton of cool stuff on the way that I can't wait to share with you. Until next time though, get out and explore somewhere.